May God bless you all. My name is Nancy Alfaro with Whip of Wisdom Ministries from Atlanta, Georgia. And today I'm bringing a message called For Such Time as This. And this message, uh, it came just as a thought, as something, something I, we dealt with uh, this week as a family. And that word I heard for such time as this. And it got me studying. I'm like, I know I have heard this before. I know it's in the Bible. And that took me to the book of Esther. And Esther is, it's a beautiful book that talks about a beautiful story. And tonight I want to highlight um, a few of the points uh, through this story. So I believe this study will help you to understand how everything in your life is a part of a perfect plan that many times life looks like it doesn't make any sense many times we are left with a lot of questions that sometimes we don't have the answer for but through this story of esther in the bible i want to bring light into this story because the story starts as esther being a young lady that she's actually an orphan she lost her mom and dad and her cousin Mordecai, who was 15 years older than her, adopts her as her daughter, and um, as his daughter. And in this story, uh, displays beautifully how God cares about each one of us and how God's plan is always perfect. Esther was a descendant of the Jews that were taken captive on Babylon, and it really reflects, you know, how now she was found in Persia and how Persia at that time was one of the biggest imperiums of history. So this story happens into a time in history that is being talked about even to this day. Um, so one of the things I want to bring up, you know, we learn in Esther chapter 2, 7, it says this, this man had a very beautiful and lovely young cousin, Hadassah, who was also called Esther. When her father and mother died, Mordecai, Mordecai adopted her into his family and raised her as his own daughter. So when we see this in the scriptures, we know that for Esther, she didn't have an easy life. Every time a child loses a mom and a dad, it's a sad story. That's tragedy. And regardless of the people around you, there's nothing that really replaces that emptiness in your heart when you, you, other than God, right? But when you lose a mom and a dad. So the story, it starts with this young lady. Now, uh, I told you that uh, where the story takes place, it was under the Persian Imperium. Now, think about this. There were about 50 million people, okay, on the setting of this story. If you say that out of 50 million people, half of them were women, we're talking about 25 million people, the population of the story. And then we hear how God picks this one woman. In the midst of these 25 million, one woman who has descendants from the parents that were taken to Babylon, and now is the center of this story that brings freedom to the people of Israel. In Esther 2.24, we read that it says, so his personal attendants suggested let us search the empire to find beautiful young virgins for the king. Let the king appoint agents in each province to bring this beautiful young woman into the royal harem at the fortress of Susa. Haggai, the king's eunuch in charge of the harem, will see that they are all given beautiful treatments. And after that, the young woman who most pleases the king will be made queen instead of Basti. This advice was very appealing to the king, so he put the plan into effect. So I, I will remind you a little bit about the story of what happened here. So what happened is that the king had a wife, a queen called Basti. 
And for six full months, they will get together, right? All the high uh, government, uh, the kingdom people, get together and do these big plans on how they were going to win the war. And during this big party, what happened is that the queen says, I am not going. I'm not going to be there. And the queen and the king got so upset because he felt like, who is it? Why this woman now is doing this? If I allow her just to set her free, uh, what's going to happen? All the women in the whole kingdom will start doing the same thing and is speaking up to the men. So he didn't like that. So they decided, let the queen go and we're going to pick a new queen. So what happens is they get together, how we read on these verses, right? They get together, the personal attendants suggested to the king, let's search through all these women, the 25 million, we're going to pick 400 women. And they had to have a specific qualifications. And they will be presented in front of the king and they will be first submitted to a treatment of 12 months for a year they needed to prepare six months with oils six other months with uh, different perfumes and they're being trained to show up in front of the king so esther was part of this group of young ladies that they were picked and again i told you from 25 million they were down to 400 and here is Esther. Now Esther, it says in Esther 2.16, Esther was taken to King Xerxes at the royal palace in early winter on the seventh year of his reign. So Esther is big and now is being presented to the king. So something curious about the book of Esther is that Esther, in the book, we don't know who the author is. And actually, God is not even mentioned once in the book. But the whole book, it's all about God and his love. So I want to bring to you a few points that I want to highlight in today's message of how the most important points, and I will challenge you to read the full story in the book of Esther so you can, you can read this story and then use this study to complement uh, that reading. So if you don't know the full story, please go read the book of Esther. And it's a very short book, and it will make a lot more sense. But I want to bring to you about a few points. Number one, God will use every negative experience to show his kindness. I told you before how Esther was an orphan. In many times in our own life, we may be dealing with the loss of a mom or dad, maybe a husband or wife, but the fact, and maybe even where you are from. For Esther, we read in the Bible that she didn't even say that she was a Jew. She kept that quiet because there was a lot of, um, uh, you know, conflict between the Persians and Israel. And for her to say she was a Jew was going to bring a lot of conflict. And, the, and Mark and I had told him, do not say anything about where you come from. And many times saying where we come from may just cause division just because. Maybe the family that you come from, maybe things that you were experienced in your own life. But I'm here to tell you that even those things that you see as a negative, even those things that you see as rejection or negative experience, God will use them to show his kindness. So the number two thing I want to show to you is that God raised a Mordecai in Esther's life to help her through the most difficult times. And I, I encourage you to see through your life and see how many Mordecais have God raised up to help you through those difficult times. Sometimes can be a good friend a grandma, a teacher, a pastor, a good neighbor, someone that is watching after you, that is guiding you through the difficult times on what to do and not to do. On this story, you find that Mordecai, he used to be at the entrance of the kingdom. He used to be 
there and he knew everybody that went in and out and through the whole story he's listening to what people are saying he's paying attention at everything that is going on around esther because he wanted to give her guidance on how she was going to move and how she was going to appeal to the king now um the next thing i want to say your step three is that god would exalt you he knows who you are and where you are. Remember that I told you that on this story of Esther, out of 25 million people, Esther was picked to be in front of the king. And then 25 million from 400 million and then Esther. Esther was the one pick. You may say, you know, God is too busy for everything that is going on around, around me. How God is going to know about what I'm dealing with. And I'm here to remind you through this story that God knows exactly who you are, where you are, the situation that you're going through. He is not blind to your circumstance. He's able to pick you from a bunch of people and say, that is my daughter. That's the one I pick. She is the one that is going to fulfill the purpose. He's right there watching. He knows who you are. You have not been forgotten. You have not been, um, you know, you are not defeated. God knows who you are. Isn't that an amazing promise to know that God knows who you are and he even knows me by name. He knows you are familiar to God. You are his daughter, his son. He knows who you are. So the number um, four that I wanted to bring to you is to always do what is right because promotion always come at the God time. Not the good time, but at the God time. What I want to say uh, this is because you need to know that um let me see i think i skip a step here he will tell you he knows who you are there is a scripture here i wanted to show you this scripture so let me go so i was talking about god will exalt you he knows who you are and he knows where you are in esther 6 1 to 3 listen to this it says the night the king had trouble sleeping he ordered an attendant to bring the book of history of his reign so it could be read to him in those records, he discovered an account of how Mordecai had exposed the plot of Victana and Teresh, two of the Nalkas who guarded the door to the king's private quarters. They had plotted to assassinate the king's sources. What reward of recognition did ever give Mordecai for this, the king asked? So here, his attendant replied, nothing has been done for him. So why don't am I reading this to you? Because, you know, God will exalt you. He knows who you are, which it was my step here. Um, God will exalt you. He knows who you are. And then I went into number four to say, always do what is right. Promotion always come at the God time. Why do I say this? On the story that I read you on Esther, Esther 6, 1, 2, 3, there is a story in the book that it says that Mordecai, he was sitting at the doors and he heard two people that had a plot against the king. At the time he reported that, he said, King, you are gonna be killed. These two are trying to have a plot against you to kill you. Now, it looked like the king didn't do anything. At that time, if you were loyal to the king, they will exalt you. And at that time, nothing happened. Nothing happened. It's almost like Mordecai say that and nothing happens. But the story says how the king had trouble sleeping. Because I do believe with all my heart that when the plan of God needs to take place, he will move whoever he needs to move for his purpose in your life to be fulfilled. This king, for some reason, couldn't sleep that night. And he said, Bring me the books because everything that happens in the, king, in the kingdom was registered. And he said to somebody, bring the records I wanna read. Imagine that I cannot sleep and the king is asking, 
I want to read. I wonder who told the king to go and find those records. Who was the one that whispered to the king to find the records? And in the records, he found that this man who was a Jew, now remember, the Jews were enemies of the Persians. They were enemies of the king. The Jews were not being looked at with good eyes. And he discovered that the one that's supposed to be his enemy is the one that showed loyalty to him. Many times you're gonna be doing things in your own life that nobody can see. You're being good to somebody. You have been good at your, at your work. You have been doing a stuff for ministry that nobody sees but only God. And it almost looks like nobody pays attention. You're doing nice things for your family and you're not being recognized. But God knows. And God knows the perfect timing. So God will never leave things behind. See, the, the king being awakened in the middle of the night, what happens that he discovers that this took place. And he said, wait a minute. These two had a plot against me. What do we do for Mordecai? What did they, we gave him? And the servants say, we did absolutely nothing for him. And you know that that moment was the moment that marks the open door for now, the, the king to see with grace, Mordecai, to see him, not only him, but the whole for the whole people of Israel to be forgiven and to be released to freedom. And I keep telling you a little more about this story. So what happens here is when we read the book of Esther is that when the, the king finds out that you know, we didn't do anything for him. Uh, there was this other guy in the story that he, uh, his name was Haman. Haman hated, hated with a passion the Jews. And he was pretty up, you know, he was body body with the king. He was in a pretty high up position. And this man has so much, um, how do I call it, arrogance. Um, that he asked everyone to bow to him. So he wanted everyone in the everyone that come to his presence to bow. And what happened, Mordecai say, I don't bow to people. The only one that I bow to is my God. And what happened is that Haman hated Mordecai, one, because he was a Jew, and two, because he didn't follow the rules and he then bowed to him. So Haman planned um, for Mordecai to be killed and also for all the Jews to be killed. And he said, I don't want only Mordecai because he knows that if Mordecai's people will, could come back and kill him if he had killed just Mordecai. So he said, I'm gonna kill them all. He was blind with, with uh, anger. He even called all the magicians all the astrologers and say, I want you to find me the right date. You told me that day and that day I'm gonna kill them all. So no, nothing is looking good for the people of Israel, right? Not even for Esther, for Esther. God, God's way is always perfect and requires faith and guidance from the Holy Spirit. So here is this young woman, I told you she was pick, from 400 people presented to the king, the king picked her. She was beautiful. Think about the king going through 400 people. He was probably tired. All these women were beautiful women. They, that was one of the requirements. But there was something about Esther. And what was about Esther is that she was marked by God. That was the beauty in Esther was coming from the inside. She had a favor that follow her, whatever she wanted. She was able to be picked from many because God was in her. So now she's finding this conflict. Nobody knows she's a Jew, but God put her in a position in front of the king to make a difference. God will put you in places that sometimes you feel like, I don't deserve to be here, but God's ways is always perfect. And what it will require is for you to have faith and to listen to what the voice of the Holy Spirit is saying to you. So Esther find herself that 
Hammond is going to kill her dad because I was like a dad to her. Mordecai, not only the dad, but every Jew, including herself. She was in great danger. And we read that in Esther, um, let's see, 4.11. Let's start reading on, on the verse 4.11 says, all the king officials and even the people in the providence know that anyone who appears before the king in his inner court without being invited is doomed to die unless the king holds out his wolf's scepter. And the king has no call for me to come for, for in 30 days. So what's going on? Esther finds out that they're gonna bow, they're gonna kill all the Jews, and she finds an obstacle. And the obstacle is that she hasn't seen the king for 30 days. You know, it's not like I say, oh, let me call him quick, let me text him. No, the the basically the paperwork, the the, the right rules, it says you cannot present yourself to the king unless he calls you. So you got to understand the position that Esther is in. Esther feels like only God can open the door. So if you read in Esther 4.13, he, you know, she hears from Mordecai what's going on. Mordecai says to her, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. So he's telling it, hey, watch out. They're coming for you too. We all going to die if we don't do something about it. And on verse 14, it says, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's families will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to the royal position for such a time as this. That's the name of the message today. What do I wanna tell you about all these things that we read about Esther? that God pick you for such a time as this. I'm gonna wrap it up now and I'm hoping that it can make sense, right? If you don't know the story, again, go back and read it and I promise you it will make sense. But I wanna summarize in this. You have this young woman in the middle of many, a woman that looks to be forgotten by all. She's in a country that is not her country. She doesn't have her mom and dad. She is with someone that raised her as her daughter. And now she finds herself in the position to compete, to be in front of the king. And it's all these people. And now she knows she could influence the king to save not only her, but her dad and her whole community, her whole country, her whole, all Israel. So this woman, just one woman, could be you, could be God have something in you, something great in you, and you are there saying, God, how are you going to do it? And the truth of the matter is that we don't know how, but I told you what Esther did. Esther, she used her courage, she used her faith, and when the, she is being found that she's about to die, listen to what she says on 416. She says, Go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. May my maids and I, I will do the same. And then though it is against the law, I will go to see the king. If I must die, I must die. Esther knew that the only way for her to get her breakthrough was for her to fast was for her people to fast and say, listen, in what I have in front of me, this looks like an, a complete impossible. I'm breaking every rule, but if I die, I die. This is a woman of faith that is saying, I don't care what happens to me. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. She prayed, she fasted, she seeked the presence of God. She was in a life and death situation and she knew it was not only her, but her family and her whole country. And maybe you're saying right now, well, I, am, I don't have a situation, so me, me. But maybe you are in a situation where you're finding yourself that you don't know what to do, that everything seems to be turning against you, that you feel like I'm gonna die if I don't have an answer from God. 
And I'm here to tell you, you need to get in the presence of God. You need to seek his presence. When nothing around you works, God works. God is the only way. He will give you the way out, but you need to seek his presence and get in the presence with God. And that's what Esther did. Esther, courage and faith in God are testimony to the trust this young woman had in the living God. His life is a lesson about God's sovereignty over his creation. God maneuvers every aspect of life to position people, governments, and situation for his plan and purpose. I want you to, to listen to that. God will maneuver every aspect of your life. He will move people around. He will move governments around if it's, if it's needed. He will do whatever he needs to do for you to fulfill the plan. We may not know what God is doing at any given time. For Esther, it didn't make sense that she was left, you know, orphaned by mom and dad. But the reason why she ended up there with the king is because Mark, Mardukai knew everything about that kingdom. And he, he was key for her to be positioned in that place. He had inside information. He heard about the plots going on against the king. He knew. So he was key. There was a person, there's maybe somebody in your life that God has put as key to take you to the next level, to the next promotion. God will move everything he needs to move for his plan to be fulfilled. Even if you don't know what's going on at a given time, but it will come a time when you will realize that we had had certain experiences, certain people, we live in certain areas, we shop in certain stores or take in certain trips for a time such this. The time will come where everything will fall into place. We will look back and see that they were also in the right place at the right time, just like it happened with Esther. She was in the harem for such time as this. She was a queen for such time as this. She was threatened and was willing to intercede for her people for such time as this. And she was faithful in her obedience. Esther trusted God and served humbly, no matter what the cost may be. She even said, if I have to die, I die. She knew the cost to follow Jesus, and she did it. Esther is truly a reminder of God's promise, as it's written in Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So I'm here to tell you, you may not understand right now on what part of the process you're in. I have used this analogy before that life is like a movie. It has different chapters, different scenes. And right now you are in the middle of a scene that doesn't look like it makes sense. Just like probably Esther being ready for a year, being getting prepared to be in front of the king, she had no clue that she was gonna, because the end of the story is that she becomes queen and she comes and changes everything that was written against Israel, that now even the property, anybody that came against Israel needed to give the property and, and they were fully protected by the Persians. That was the law. God changed everything around. At the moment, she didn't know. When she was little and was an orphan, she didn't know. When she was about 20 years old that she's getting prepared to just be presented in front of the king, she didn't know. It's not until we, hear, we read the rest of the story that we realize that Esther is a perfect plan and it's a perfect story of how God takes you from point A to point Z. And there's many things in between, but you see that at the end of the story, God is God and God is showing his kindness. So to wrap it up, God is with you. You may be in a process in life that you don't understand right now. But I tell you one thing. God is working his perfect plan in your life. Even if you don't know or understand the why, God is working a perfect plan. So I invite you today to get in the presence of God like Esther did. If you find yourself 
that there is a roadblock. If you're finding yourself, Lord, I don't know what to do now. I feel like whatever I thought life needed to be in my life, it's out the door. Everything seems to be upside down. If you are on one of those moments, you are a perfect candidate for God to do something beautiful in your life. All that he's seeking is for you to come to him, to pray, to say, Lord, show your plan. God has something beautiful. God has not forgotten about you. So come to him, seek his presence, and you will see that you were prepared for such time as this. Nothing that you're living today is in vain. Every situation, every place you have been, every experience you have gone through is part of a beautiful plan that you haven't seen the end yet. But I promise you, God will succeed and you will succeed when you are holding on to him. Have faith, don't lose hope. You will get to the end of the story and you will see that God is forever faithful in what he promised to you, he will give to you. He's not a liar, he's always truthful. May God bless you. Remember to subscribe to our channel in YouTube and share this message with other people. Remember, God is with you always. God bless you.